<laughs> hey, uh, I'm Ed from Devil Solid Soul. And I'm Paul from Devil Solid Soul, and you're listening to Interview Under Fire. All right, how's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another new edition of Interview Under Fire. This is your host, Sonny. This time, along with the vocal duo of Ed Gibbs and Paul Green, quite the honor. Thank you both so much for joining our podcast today on IUF. You know, this is an important yet exciting time coming up here in the month of April for you and the rest of the guys over at Devil Soul to Soul with the release of your long-awaited fourth studio album, Loss, drops April 9th on Nuclear Blast Records. Now, I just want to say, you know, congratulations on all the well-deserved recognition it's been getting so far, especially with the singles Beyond Reach, The Narcissist, and Burden. Shout out to Kerrang for praising the work you guys have put out. And there's just so much to discover about this unique release, but... Before we get to that, I was talking to Paul before the interview started. I'm going to ask a very important question to start things off. How are you guys, man? How's life in the UK? I think that's an important one to ask. It's a simple one, but an important one. You know, how have you guys been in the last year since we've been removed from the whole live concert experience? It's been attritional. The attrition is strong. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're basically just coming, coming towards the beginning of the end of our third just lockdown. Often, so, wow. um, yeah, hopefully it's the beginning of the end. Um, but yeah, it's it's starting to look a bit better. Um, it's been tough. I mean, it's been. I mean, I know the US has had it bad as well. Obviously, a lot of people died and stuff. But um, yeah, yeah, we've been we've kind of been in this stay at home state for quite a long time, and yeah. I just miss people. I miss that interaction. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, we've been locked away. Really, we haven't been able to see anyone. I'm, neither no, no one's seen anyone else in the band this uh, this year. Yeah. So far. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if uh, you guys saw, like, Texas opened everything up in the last couple of weeks, and everything's kind of just flipped on its head. Like, nobody has to wear masks anymore. And I'm, and this is spring break. This is the worst time for it Whoa. to happen. So, uh, yeah. we, like, we, I won't be surprised if we shut things down again in a week yeah. or two. So, and, and I'm already, up. yeah, and I'm already immune compromised. My family's in the same way. So, we're kind of just, I don't know, man. But here we are doing what we love. Now, you know, obviously, yeah. life as of late, you know, many of us have have been away from the stage a lot, you know, fans and musicians alike. But how are you guys both keeping up your vocals these days? Is that, is that you know, <laughs> affecting your musicianship? Has anything changed for your routine wise lately, if at all? Well, like, I've heard the album nonstop. And I'm like, holy shit, these guys have picked up where they left off. <laughs> well, we practiced a lot in, in, in the lead up to recording that record. And I think I can speak for both of us when I say... It, it, We've not been able to sing or scream no. since then, so we need to put in a lot of work before we actually. I, I basically do sing at my little boy every day. He gets a new song every day, and that's about the only way I keep my vocals going. But I don't scream at him, <laughs> so it's. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think I'm gonna have to learn how to scream again. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and, you know, with Devil Soul to Soul, you know, uh, you guys have been around since 2004. And I mean, both of you have been at it for nearly 20 years, maybe even longer than that. Of course, there were lineup changes between the you two. But I want to ask, you know, how was the touring life for you both personally? Because you guys have played at, you know, numerous U European festival appearances, including Summer Breeze with Full Force, Headlining Download Festival. You guys have played with Cult of Luna, Architects, Norma Jean, Under Oath. I mean, the list goes on. And now we've all been taking an unexpected step back. And does it make you both have a growing appreciation of the touring life looking back yeah i miss, I nice miss some outside. of the, yeah exactly <laughs> I, I miss some of the simple things um i think touring life for me is like i love playing the shows obviously but i love seeing places um yeah. one of the big things for like going out to central europe for example going to like germany and stuff and just hanging out with the guys and just having a having a schnitzel and a beer or whatever in a pub afterwards it's just you miss that and just doing it in another in another country where it's just different there's you no know, that, that change in life day to day while you're on tour is such a unique thing i don't think many people will experience if they haven't done it themselves yeah, yeah of course just hang out with your friends so that's yeah. like the big thing really isn't it that it's like it is sort of universal to everyone whether it be touring or just general life just hanging yeah. out with your friends that's the best bit yeah, I mean, Ed, I think you put it perfectly, you know, with just the simple things, just hanging out with friends, you know, just going outside, simple things like that. And now a very popular topic that's in, within the last year, I know you guys have seen this, a lot of bands have been doing live streaming. They're taking what they're doing on stage and doing it on the screen like we're doing right now. Obviously, these interviews yeah. would be in person. Yeah. But, you know, we've had bands like Insomnium on the show. We've had Lamb of God on the show, August Burns Red. They talked about their live experiences, how 
you know, they would sell virtual tickets to the fans, something like that, and they would stream it for them. So let me ask you about this, because considering the amount of touring you've done, the amount of uh, artists you played with, the amount of people you met, the fans, do you think that the pandemic, you know, like the quarantine induced live streaming surge that we're seeing right now from all these artists, is that going to affect the touring musician business going forward through your perspective? Like, do you still see bands, I don't know, doing something like this, even after all this is over? I don't reckon. I mean, it depends. If once it's over, I don't think so. Um, I, I, there's something we won't we won't do it ourselves because we just don't vibe off it. And I think one of the big things for being in a band is like vibing off the crowd and getting that feedback from them. Yeah. Like you just I just miss that. And you know, we've spoken about doing them, and you know, a couple of a couple of us are just like it's not for me. Um, I don't think anything will ever replace a live show, and I think people. In a year, maybe maybe longer for like international stuff, um, it's going to go back to normal. People will hopefully put us behind them, and we can just enjoy being in a room together, sweating and <laughs> spilling beer over each other. Uh, that's good because I've been moshing in my room for the last year. I'm ready to get out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's always curious to. There's no right or wrong answer to what I just asked because yeah, yeah. you know there's bands who could say like, yeah, I would love to do live streaming. It gives me a chance to engage with my fans. And some bands would say, oh, I'm not doing anything until all this is over. But there's always that uncertainty going forward. You do the live streaming, right? But now, how much more yeah. creative can you get? Well, that's and, the thing. I think, I think bands like Architects have done such an amazing job of it that it's sort of to, yeah. You can't even really compete, I don't think. So it's it's kind of almost why bother? Not why bother? That sounds lazy, but I mean, it's it's hard to um, to better anything like that, and especially when you're on a really sort of limited budget, I suppose, because um, it needs to look amazing, it needs to look cinematic, it needs to look like filmic, and it that that doesn't come cheap, I suppose. And uh, you always it's it's a it's a big old investment. That's that's yeah. all I suppose. Huge. Yeah, and you put it pretty nicely right there. That's that's the best way to sum it up. Now, I know we guys, you know, we talked about everything from head to toe. Let's talk about that fourth album, Loss. Uh, comes out April 9th on Nuclear Blast Records. Uh, good God. Um, follow up to the 2012's Empire of Light. Well worth the wait. If there's a comeback album of the year, this is it. It was a decade mm-hmm. in the making, which includes the first record for Devil Soul to Soul with the dual vocal attack. The chemistry you two have formed with each other is nothing short of remarkable. So I had to ask you this. Out of the two of you, who is the most serious and who's the most relaxed? <laughs> uh, Take question. a shot at each other on this one. I think it That's... depends on what mood you catch us in. I could be changes. quite a, a serious dude in some ways because, like, I don't know, I just I do a lot of the management for the band, so I, I probably have a bit more of a, a worry going on. <laughs> yeah, the but then there's, yeah. then there's times when we're writing on songs and I have to just shut up. Yeah. <laughs> like, <shut> up, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, don't, it's yeah, I, fun. I think uh, we we inhabit the role that the other one isn't. <laughs> yeah. <given> point. <laughs> yeah. You know, when when I heard this album, it was just the perfect blend of earth shattering riffs and soaring melodies. You can talk about post post hardcore, post metal, metalcore. It those are like almost like genres that you have pretty much redefined, so to speak. Like I was telling Paul earlier, it reminded me of bands like Listener and Architects and Defeater and More Than Life from songs like Ardor. Like it just, that song threw me right into the fire. Like did not let me go until the very last song from Burden to The Narcissist, to Signifier, Signifier to the title track. It had such a unique take to add to your impressive catalog. And it's as good as it gets. It was very ethereal, very emotional, very atmospheric. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop talking right now because I've, I'm gonna go on forever about this gem <laughs> I mean, of an honestly, album. But it's but, so good to hear it. Like um, we we've only had like a couple of reviews back, and to actually hear people talk about it and it's validating. It really means yeah, a lot. You know, and we've been uh, done it for nine months now, finished. And it's, it's, now, now yeah, let pretty- me let me ask you this. You know, considering you talked about nine months, how much did things change from when you guys first started composing on this album to where you ended up? finishing it did a lot change in between did nothing change in between was there already a specific sound you guys knew you wanted with loss i think the sound wise it's kind of it took its course quite naturally um i'd say like our lives which uh you know we've written about quite heavily on it have got better um you know people have been going through some really really tough times during this process and from day one with our drummer alex uh, losing his mum really unexpectedly to to where we are now, I think everyone's in the best place. 
obviously lockdown has been quite trying but um you know it's nothing worse than losing a loved one especially to someone that close so i i don't know we i guess musically it was a journey but it, uh, personally and emotionally it was more of a journey than the music yeah ed did, ed, did you want to add anything to that uh, just maybe that uh, when we went like in terms of uh, writing the songs I guess as a band we didn't really have a specific um, MO with it I guess we just mm. went at it the same way that we've always gone at it from sort of day one and that's just it's just appeasing ourselves that's all I suppose and as as and I think as we were sort of gathering more songs you kind of start to get an idea of where maybe we need to what sort of moods we need to pick up with the other songs which may be like drives where we go later on and not in terms of like linearly but as we were writing songs drove where we sort of maybe went so uh, just trying to think where what how it sort of went but um they, i remember definitely towards the end it was like we still need a song to finish this record we haven't yeah. got that that song yet and yeah. um paul and rick had been working on something and um the second i heard it i was like well that's that's it that's the last song and we started like arranging it together I'm putting some simple, um, yeah, just simple arrangement together, sending it back to the guys, Johnny picking it up. And it really just went through all of us um, in terms of like it, 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 it started with just Paul with a vocal idea. Rick then took the baton and and, uh, and uh, started uh, just putting piano and stuff to it. And then I picked it up and started like just arranging it in terms of like how the sections would go. And then Johnny picked it up and just really took it through to the end. And it was it was really nice yeah, how that's that crazy. Sort of, evolved and then suddenly it was like hey we've got the fucking closer now haven't we <laughs> yeah uh, I was, you know speaking of johnny you mentioned him johnny renshaw for people who don't know it was recorded engineered and mixed by your own guitarist johnny in his uk-based band his studios i'm sure there was a sense of comfortability in the studio for you both and for the rest of the band knowing yeah. that johnny was working on this record inside and out yeah. right yeah definitely yeah. i mean I've, I've worked in i've been in quite a lot of studios with other bands etc and done stuff but nobody pushes you harder and uh, to get the right stuff than johnny does which is like you know if he were if he was in the band or not we he's the right person he 100 percent is but because he knows the songs super super well and has that emotional connection with he the album which it sounds like doesn't he yeah exactly and he knows me and paul like obviously really well he's been a close mate of mine for coming up to yeah two decades now so uh, recording vocals is such like an intimate thing so it's quite a scary thing to do so to be able to do that with your friend is it makes it so much easier but also knowing that that friend is <laughs> it's a punisher at, yeah in the band yeah, at, yeah. At terms of, like that's not good enough it's like oh i think it is it's like it's not i, know I think i think it. i think it's important to have someone that say that says it's not good enough you know yeah, no matter how definitely. close or far they are it's like you have, some, have to have someone pushes you now that's why i wanted to learn about the production because it was so polished it was i feel like metal albums are one of the hardest records to actually produce and yeah. johnny did it to perfection like it, it kind of just you could tell that it was in his nature to create something like this let alone play in the band yeah. now he's really, you know he's really managed to get the whole sort of uh natural feel with it still sounding like a modern uh metal record like the drums still sound like real drums but they've got all the smack and power that you'd expect from like a more sort of oh good god yes <laughs> so he's really managed to straddle these two opposing forces and pull them together into this just amazing mix it's awesome you know you know between writing and stretching the songs and the production process like you just talked about i'm gonna throw a lyric at you maybe i could find the sense of peace now that's the that <laughs> that is the one lyric that stuck with me throughout the entirety of the album is from the first song Ardor and it kind of set the tone. Now the lyricism surrounding Devil Sold His Soul in this record deals a great narrative of personal loss, grief, and the process of healing. It touches on mental health and anxiety. At a time like now, I feel like this couldn't have been a more fitting album to put out. It really resonated with someone like me who also deals with mental health. And I've, I've lost a few people in this last year alone. And of course the fans on YouTube, I don't know if you've seen the comments on fans, they have connected with the songs in like, in a whole different dimension that maybe they had never predicted. Now, of yeah. course, you talked about the band's loss of family members, uh, your own issues on mental health. And Paul, you said it yourself, the songs were a catharsis. They also allowed us to communicate the things that we found hard to speak in person. Uh, yeah. They're a snapshot in time to help us remember the ones we've loved and lost. So let me just round it out. I know I'm, I'm 
building things up here. Let me just round it out to this uh, topic of a question. To what level do you guys like to have a theme for your music and how important are themes to you? Is that more about helping you write or sound or is that more for the audience? Because a lot of artists, they don't really care about themes. They just do 10 songs in the studio and that's it. <laughs> but I felt like with Lost, you guys really you guys really took it from the inside out and, and put a lot of hard work and dedication to connect with the fans as well as yourselves. I mean, that's just, I, I'm one of millions, but uh, I would love to get your take on that. I think because early it was it was really when we started writing the record that that Alex lost his mum and we, we've obviously like known his family for for years just because all of our parents have just been like the biggest support to us like the whole time and so uh, we we we've, we've all known everyone and we know how devastating that that was for for Lex and because it happened so early it was really just like it frames the whole writing of the record be it thematically or quite like literally in terms of he was in the studio with us writing songs and he was he was grieving like really obviously grieving mm. and I, I think it just it just it really made it really obvious that that's where we needed to start and that's how we needed to approach it as a catharsis for everything just trying to yeah. just I guess ironically it, it, yeah sorry. it's the, it's the la it's the last track that we wrote about it's the last song um, yeah. it's the last one we finished but it's I think it it was the last song as well because it needed most work in terms of detail and attention but the whole album we there was a lot i would say a lot went on in that time a lot there was it wasn't just alex's yeah. mom that passed there was several people and another things that happened um we had a a, a wealth a, a pool of <laughs> sadness really to pull up all the <laughs> stuff from and um and it it kind of as, you know, we didn't set out necessarily to write every song about that and we didn't there's a couple of tracks on there that are kind of a little bit different like the narcissist for example there that's again it is about stuff that's happened in the last couple of years but it's not about loss and sadness etc and uh, grief but we like to we like to pull stuff from our own lives and i think it's important that we do yeah. that because it's sincere and having sincerity and that catharsis that when you write a track it adds more to it and you can make it feel and just be more than just a, a manufactured track that you've done just to fill a, a one to ten slot and i think if you if you if you sing more about sort of um i don't know like feelings and stuff without putting anything to like uh, writing too literally about how what you're feeling about and stuff it does make the songs quite a lot more relatable i think because people can take the, the same things that you're feeling and apply them to like things that they're feeling the same way about you know what i mean it's not like it's not like you you've outlined this very specific situation that you're in because that makes it completely unrelatable in many respects because that's your situation and that's that's like your life but if you sing about sort of how that's making you feel that really uh i, I think people can really relate to that um yeah i'm gonna throw you guys a bone here because before this interview started, uh, within the last, what, 12 hours, I saw this quote that really stuck with me. And I don't know if this was just divine intervention, but something that I I read this, I'm going to pass it on to you guys. We don't move on from grief. We we move forward with it. Yeah. And when I read that, I'm like, wow. That's it. that's, uh, I mean, that couldn't have, have just the, the connection I had with that statement. I don't know where it's from. I read it somewhere online. One of my, I think I scrolled through Facebook. Some of my, one of my friends posted it. And at a time like now, I felt like, Wow, that's a very powerful statement. And yeah, that, I think that, that just rounds it out to really similar yeah, to that. Yeah. It's really similar to one lost. And it's funny because that, that line in loss, because um, I, I spoke to Alex about his, his grieving process and mm -hmm. and his mum passing and et cetera. And, and everything that he said, we, we put into the lyrics. But I remember precisely about what that line is. It's um, so it's sadness always comes in waves. I'll learn to live with it someday. Although it will never truly leave, life will grow around its grow around our grief and some of that came from something that tom um dancer said about tom uh from architects when tom passed and that's yeah. what um alex was talking about on the call and it's like well that really stuck with me and that's why it ended up in the song because it was something that lex was talking about how he was feeling about his own mum passing and it's really similar to what you just said there it's like of grief course. will not go but life will go around it yeah, um, I, I, I think it gives us a chance to grow in ways yeah. that we have, may have never 
known before about ourselves, you know, yeah, like these interviews that I do, these are, I love doing these interviews, but it's more, more than that. You know, if it wasn't for the music you guys put out, I wouldn't be here today. So much appreciation for everything you guys have oh, done for you, your man. careers. Man. Now, you know, from the different experiences and perspectives and your timelines, each of you have taken in that we have discussed about whether it's being one of the most respected and revered underground bands in the UK, the critical acclaim for the albums you put out, touring the world in massive venues while sharing the stage with other notable artists, like I mentioned before, the joining of forces between you two at this point. And it still sounds like you guys have much left to put out there with the artistic vision. And this is definitely something you have a passion for. And, and you've experienced plenty in your careers, careers already, Ed and Paul. So let me ask you this. Have your aspirations as individuals or a band have they changed or evolved since when you first started performing in the industry? Like, do you see things differently today? Oh, absolutely. Big yeah. time. When we started, it was, it, I mean, it was always like a passion project. It's always been a passion project. If we ever didn't feel like we couldn't put out anything that was like we felt strongly about, I don't think we'd be uh, doing it. But I think earlier, earlier doors, we, we were much more of a career band in terms of like this was our thing and this is what we were doing. But I think now it's all sort of turned on its head a little bit. Like in that period where we were quiet, everyone has really sorted out their sort of personal life and careers, I suppose, in terms of just just a way of making money through the day to be able to enable doing this. And to do that means that it takes so much pressure off it and you can really just focus on the enjoyment factor and, and not have to worry about, is this going to pay my bills? Because that is that is seriously stressful mm -hmm. shit, basically. So being able to take that stress away from the band just means that we can really just look at it as just a joyful thing to be doing and just following yeah, definitely. The routes that and we want to take. I guess like um, in terms of goals and stuff as well, like they do change because you achieve them. You achieve goals as you go, so you set new ones. And I guess for us, there's our, our goals now are to play places we've never played before, to reach to reach new people's ears. Um, to get get to those bigger venues that we've never played because we've never had those opportunities and I really I really hope we get them now because you know I think we've done we've done everything we can to to put ourselves in that position it's just a, it's just sometimes it's a bit of luck and sometimes it's a bit of the right yeah. person hearing hearing uh, your music yeah. um, it, it's not straight not straightforward it's just been really hard working um, there's a lot more to it and I just hope that we get those chances because you know. We're, we're not we're not young bucks anymore and <laughs> no, i can i can relate to that <laughs> um but do me a favor do not break up ever like uh, no, I, I hope I, I know i'm, I'm just like, like i said i'm just one fan out of millions hey i'm i'm someone across the pond here in the states I'm hoping you guys can come here oh, come and, on, and put the really show out that you guys yeah. have had so i, I was telling that. paul and like let's stay connected after this interview um i hope you guys yeah. book a show here in texas you guys will get a warm welcome i will be sure of that and, and uh <laughs> um i know you guys have to go here but uh you guys have any you know last words any shout outs anything you'd like to plug or mention as far as Devil Soul to Soul and Loss or anything else in between. Like, I don't know if you guys are going to do a live stream anytime. Like, is that yeah, something know, that crossed your mind now? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think it's for us necessarily. Um, <laughs> I just I just want to say, like, thank you. It's been a really real pleasure talking yeah, to you. It's been really um, fun. Thanks. Um, yeah, it's, I wish we could talk more because I yeah, like, same, I know, man. I'm I know you have another interview go. left. So, but hey, let me tell you this. Like, let like I said, let's, let's, uh, in the future, come to Texas. Yeah. We'll do another interview with you guys and maybe let's the boys it. want to do it. There's actually, we do our special unique take on our interviews. We actually give you chicken wings and give you a hot sauce level <laughs> higher with each question. We actually oh read lyrics. God. We read lyrics and we make you guess to see if it's right or wrong, or, you know, which song it is. And <laughs> oh, so anyway, God. that's an idea now. Now you guys know. Yeah, we're interviewing our fire while we call ourselves that. <laughs> Amazing. So, uh, let's stay in touch after this interview. Um, I'll give you guys a follow here on the socials. And Definitely. everyone who's listening, uh, please uh, buy Lost if you can. The bands can't do it without your help. I still buy albums. It's still in the corner of my room. I still buy records, you know. comes out April 9th on Nuclear Blast Records. You can listen to this podcast on every major podcast stream out there, whatever you have. Check us out on our interview under fire, under, interviewunderfire.com. I'm trying to talk as fast as I can so I can let you go to your next interview. <laughs> Ed Gibbs and Paul Green, it's been such an honor. You guys stay safe out there in the UK, and uh, let's stay in touch. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much, you. man. Thank you for everyone right, listening. Man.
Hey guys, thanks for listening to Interview Under Fire podcast. If you guys liked what you heard, please subscribe and share our channel. And please leave a five-star review as that helps us tremendously. If you'd like to check out more, visit www.interviewunderfire.com or our social media channels on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And finally, we want to thank you all for the support you've been giving us. Keep it burning.